Hello and welcome back to the Fierce Kitten Studio channel. Today we're going to talk about the basics of machine embroidery and how you can get started with making your own little designs and applying it to handbags if you want. Let's get started! The first thing that you need to talk about is getting a machine. So there's a couple of different kinds of machines that you can get. You can get a sewing and embroidery combination machine, or you can get a dedicated embroidery machine. I have actually used both. And really, it just depends on your budget. Um, but budget also kind of correlates with the size of a hoop that you want. So hoop sizes come in as small as these tiny two inch by two inch squares, um, and they get as large as 14 inches by 14 inches. Typically, the price of the machine goes up with as much throat space as needed for the size of the hoop. So if you need to embroider something that's 14 inches by 14 inches, then you need to go up to the top tier, um, which is probably going to cost you well over $10,000. It's basically a small car. Um, a lower end machine that kind of whets the appetite, gets you started on uh, learning machine embroidery can be anywhere from $400 to $600. Um, so really it just depends on what it is that you want. Um, I tend to lean toward using brother machines for my embroidery. I've also used Viking in the past. Um, but, uh, now, and, and when I show you my machine, you'll, you'll see that I'm, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little high end there, but when have my machines not been? Um, but that's because of experience. So I have a little more experience with the embroidery and I felt comfortable because I started with a sewing and embroidery combination machine. Um, and uh, and I, I sold it thinking, I don't need to do embroidery. Uh, and then immediately changed my mind about a year later. So learn from my mistakes. Um, so I actually have a dedicated embroidery machine at the Brother PRS 100. So when I show you the videos, um, of it actually embroidering, that's why. But in general, like if you if you go with a lower end, like a lower cost machine, not lower end. I don't like to say that because it sounds gatekeepy. But if you go with a lower cost machine, um, then that it's going to do just fine. It's basically just going to limit you on the speed, so the number of stitches per minute that it can do, uh, and and of course the the largest size hoop. So really, just figure out what it is that you want to be accomplishing with your embroidery. Like, do you feel like you're going to need um, a larger embroidery area? Then you are going to have to adjust your budget. Okay. Now that we've gotten past the machine and trying to figure out what it is you need to get there. Now you need supplies. So there's a couple of different supplies that you're going to need just for the basics of embroidery. Um, you're going to need stabilizers. So uh, this is very similar to interfacing for bags. Um, there's a couple of different stabilizers that you need to be aware of. Most popular, um, at least for clothing, would be a cutaway stabilizer. There's also tearaway stabilizer. So normally for things that are going to be worn, uh, I use cutaway because it, they will likely get washed. It'll keep the stitches um, nice and stable. Well, stabilized I is the name of it. Stabilizer. Gosh, I, 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 I'm a genius. Galaxy brain right here. So, um, so I use cutaway for clothing, but then for towels, ironically enough, because I get washed so much, <laughs> I actually use tearaway because you don't want to see this backing on the underside of it. Actually, let me get... Let me get a hat. Hold on. I'll show you. So you'll see that on the back side here, that's the stabilizer for my little design. So it's keeping uh, those stitches nice and safe um, and from repeated wear and tear. Towels, on the other hand, are pretty thick on their own, so they don't really need to have that extra stabilizer in the back. Um, so I just use tear away so it tears away on the edges, and then whatever ends up under the stitching will stay there. It won't get washed away. Um, speaking of wash away, when you're embroidering on things that are plush, so knit fabrics and towels or fleece, things like that, things that have a little bit of a push and a give, um, you're going to need to pick up water-soluble stabilizer. And I know this looks like saran wrap. It's great, isn't it? This stuff actually melts in water. 
Um, but the important thing is it keeps the stitches on the very top of the fabric so it doesn't get sunk down into the plushness of the fabric. So you end up with a really nice even stitch on the very top of, of your design. Um, and you can peel this away um, or, uh, you know, what I usually do is I, I will wash things. Um, so while I don't need that for a cap per se, I do need it when I do beanies. So beanie hats and towels, I've used this quite regularly because of the plushness of the fabric. Um, so aside from stabilizers, you also need needles. I'm just gonna set my hat back here. Um, needles are gonna depend on your machine. In general, you're gonna get an embroidery specified needle that is 75 over 11. So the 75 11 uh, needles are what you need. They have a longer shank or eye um, and they're much sharper. So embroidery when it's done by machine is so fast and, and precise. So, like there's a, there's a lot of precision that goes into it. So um, that is, it's important that you have the correct needle um, and some machines are more in, are industrial and they kind of need a different type of needle. So that's why I'm not showing you needles. Um, but when I have uh, my, my sewing and my embroidery combo machine, uh, I used uh, Schmetz embroidery needles and it was just fine. They also make them in like the pro version with chrome um, and they do last a little longer. Um, now for thread, you can't use all purpose cotton thread. You have to get embroidery thread. It's still, it's still 40 weight um, and it's, I recommend Floriani or Madeira thread. Um, the other ones you'll see are Robinson Anton. Um, and, uh, oh, I forgot the other one. Oh, well. So you'll see Robinson Anton also. Um, it, it, uh, it's basically super high gloss, high shine. You can buy it matte if you don't want it to do that. Um, but I think it kind of defeats the purpose. Embroidery needs to kind of stand out and look shiny. And also because it catches the light when you, when you get embroidery designs that are done correctly and they kind of pivot and shift the angle of the stitching, it really shows, it adds depth to the design. So, and we'll get into designs and such later because that is a whole different ball of wax. Um, there are starter kits for the thread. Um, so I would say don't, like I started to, when I would run out of a color, I would turn around and start buying the, the, the good stuff. So get a starter kit on Amazon, totally usable. I mean, it really is. It's more like, I did the same thing with my watercolors. I bought student grade, like a starter pack. And then as I worked through colors, I went and I bought the pro tubes. That's pretty much it. Like you, you don't really have, but but buy a, a starter kit for sure to get like the more popular colors because otherwise this is gonna run you a bit. These, th depending on where you go, this is gonna be five to $7 for this little guy here. Um, will it last a while? Yeah. Um, now, bobbin thread. Um, <laughs> bobbin thread is typically 60 weight. It comes in white and black um, and if your machine can handle it, just buy the pre-wounds. Otherwise, you'll find yourself mid-design completely out of a bobbin. So you've lost bobbin chicken to start with. Um, and you have to wind a bobbin. Very annoying. Um, so I've, I've just learned to love the, um, the pre-wounds. And I actually just buy mag the magne magnetic ones. <laughs> the magnetic ones for my PRS 100 um, and they're fantastic. I, I bought a box of like a hundred of them for 10 bucks and I was like done. Um, so, so I don't really have to worry about it. Um, but if you want, you can buy big cones of it, but it needs to be 60 weight because it needs to be lighter on underneath um, because that's not going to be seen by anybody. Um, and, and typically the way that the tension works in an embroidery machine, it ends up hiding that top, the, the bobbin thread anyway. Like it, it pulls it under. It's a little tighter in the bobbin side. So yes, yeah, so that's all you have to worry about as far as supplies go. Um, snips might be useful. Some, some little snips. Um, if you're watching this channel, you probably know about snips, but just in case, um, the ones with the curved tips, 
are the best. You want to get really close to the underside, uh, like right to up to the embroidery, um, so you can snip jump stitches. Not every embroidery machine is going to um, automatically cut before moving to another area, and so that's called a jump stitch. And so you'll see like between between letters is a big one. You'll see like a tiny little stitch that exists between them. Sometimes you can snip those. I don't normally. It really just depends on how obnoxious it is. Um, but uh, like, especially with lettering, you want to leave it typically because it can actually destabilize the stitching if you do that. But if you do start cutting them, then where on the either end where you snip, please make sure to put a little uh, fray check down to glue it so it doesn't come apart on you. Designs. So you can't just take a picture off of Google Images and put it on the machine, unfortunately. I know that a lot of people go into embroidery thinking that that's how it works, and it really isn't. So you can either purchase your designs. There's a lot of great places. I personally love String Theory Fabric Art. They're wonderful, um, and they have a lot of great designs. There's also urbanthreads.com. Don't worry, I'll put all these links at the bottom. Um, so you can peruse these sites, Etsy as well, Etsy's great, uh, and purchase a design that you want. Make sure that you have the right to sell items made with the design before you agree to purchase because you don't want to get caught into a really sticky legal situation. I can tell you that Urban Thread um, and String Theory Fabric Art uh, both allow you to do that, so you're in good hands there. Um, but if you get an itch to make your own, to digitize, there's software out that, that, that you can get. So there's Embrilliance um, and, and, and Embird, which are kind of on the lower end. And then there's higher end stuff like Hatch, um, Brother Software, uh, you know, the, the Viking series, which is, uh, <laughs> That's, that's different, <laughs> um, which I had before, but they still use the dongle. See, I hate the software dongles. I won't do it. Um, but uh, if you need, you can digitize. The, the, basically, the price point gets higher the more auto digitizing that you need. Um, and, uh, you know, I, Hatch goes on sale regularly, but still, like, to give you an idea, Hatch is probably $1,200 US dollars retail, whereas, like, in brilliance and bird things like that are more like four or five hundred dollars just really depends on what you want to do with it but make sure that when you get into it that you're really into it because if you aren't it not terribly cost effective there are digitizing services out there where people will digitize for you if you send them an image um so it's not entirely necessary for you to have that when you get into it. Um, the only reason I had software to start is because it came as a package with my Viking. Um, so that was it. But uh, yeah, now now I do customize things. Um, yeah, I'll actually run you through a few of the designs that I have, um, as well as show you string theory fabric art. So let's go and check that stuff out. Okay, so this is, this is Hatch, and this is one of the little little guys I made from Animal Crossing, which is a Nintendo game. This is Raymond. He's one of the cat pets uh, that you can have. Um, and then, you know, I just have a ton of stuff in here. You know, like, um, I have the Animal Crossing bell. I have a Stargate Apophis symbol. Imposter crewmate for those of you who love, um, uh, what is it, Among Us. Um, but, like, and I'm going to have, I'm going to go through tutorials where I am going to record how to do these things um, so people can learn. Um, it's not hard. It just takes a little bit of time to kind of figure out what works for you. So like when you when you go the digitizing route and if you're gonna buy software, um, make sure you've done some embroidery for a while before you hop in with both feet. Otherwise you're gonna lose a lot of materials and time to experimenting. Now as, now, as far as it goes for uh, websites and purchasing, this is String Theory Fabric Art. She has a lot of really cute stuff. Um, uh, you know, some stuff is, is um, definitely, like, IP-based, um, but... Others are just like general geekery, like like this this cute all geared up uh, steampunk stuff is 
awesome. Um, she has key fobs, journal covers, bookmarks, uh, you know, keychains, all kinds of really awesome stuff. Um, definitely take a look there. Uh, very talented. I've never had an issue stitching out her designs. And then if we go to Urban Threads. Um, Urban Threads also has some really gorgeous stuff. Um, if you look at, look, um, now I need to buy this. Sure, I'll accept your cookie. Um, thread painting, look at, look at this gorgeous thread painting. I still have not personally figured out how the heck they do this stuff. So that's why I buy from them. <laughs> okay, I kind of need that. Um, in any case, Urban Threads, I'll link both of these sites at the bottom, um, wonderful uh, websites to get designs from. You don't need to, go hog wild and get crazy expensive software to start. That's just silly. All right, I'm just gonna do a really small embroidery to show you guys how to do this. I've got my snips. See, this is the little curved ones from Fomore that I was talking about. Um, just just little snips that are curved because then it won't dig in uh, to your pattern after you've stitched any, if you need to clear any threads away. Um, Typically your hoop is gonna have two parts. It's gonna have the main piece that attaches to the machine. And mine looks like this because again, I have a standalone embroidery machine. I have a, uh, you know, the Brother PRS 100. So it's a little different. Um, so you'll have that piece that attaches to the machine and then you'll have the inner part of the hoop that kind of goes in and snaps. The, you'll see, so this portion here actually hooks into the machine. Um, so the machine will actually recognize what kind of hoop is plugged in. And then there's a screw on one end here. Some of them just clamp down. This one actually has a hard screw. Um, I don't really need a screwdriver to tighten it, but there is there's a screw on this end if I need to do that. Um, and that you loosen it up as much as you can um, before hooping anything. Then I have my fabric that I wanna stitch to and my stabilizer. Now if, for bag makers who typically watch my channel, this fabric, if you were to pretend that this was the front panel of a bag, I would actually cut a little bigger than the pattern piece so I don't have to worry about exact placement because I am just that scared. I mean, I've been embroidering with my machine for years and I still get freaked out by that. So, um, so let's, you know, if this was like for a bag, I probably would have cut a little extra just for some wiggle room. Um, and then I can place my acrylic template over it and I can cut it out more accurately. So the, and uh, also um, some hoops and some machines will come with a little guide. So you can take the guide and put it over and like use chalk, uh, like a chalk pencil to mark where the center is and stuff. I don't normally do that. This actually is a guide to a different hoop. I don't have a guide for this one, um, but just, you know, be aware that it's typically it, it's not this entire area that you're gonna embroider, it's within a quarter inch on either end. And some machines are offset a little. Um, so every machine is different. That's why I'm kind of glossing over this and I apologize for not having specifics, but my machine does this differently than say a Viking or, or another brother machine even. So you're gonna take your stabilizer and put it down if you want as a little extra stability, like if you don't, like this is cutaway, right? So I don't really care. You can spray it with a little bit of adhesive spray. So it's temporary. If you can hear that little squish in the back. Um, I spray it down just so it, it's definitely nice, nice and flush to the fabric and, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, maybe this part being more loose than this part. Um, I, don't, I don't normally fuss about it too much. Um, but you know, it's all good. Then you take the top, the loose piece uh, that would be the interior piece and I set it on top, right where I want it to go. Um, now, if I had drawn chalk lines, let's say, let me grab some chalk and do that. Let's say I drew a line. I'm being so fussy about this video. Put, we'll just do this. Look, it's a cross, it's great. That's where I find the buried treasure, right? Um, so this hoop, for example, actually has little dots on either end that you can feel. I don't think you guys can see it, but right in the center sections. So I can use those to line up so that they all meet dead center. Okay, so they're, they're, 
this dot, this dot, that, and that, and they're all on that line. So that's how you can use it to line it up. And then I just pick up either end while holding down with my thumb and pick it up like this, holding it taunt and pick up the whole thing. And then I just squish it into the hoop. So you gotta squish it down real good. Now, mind you, if your fabric is super thick, some of these smaller hoops aren't gonna work. That's a whole different topic. And I will, I will kind of um, get on that. Now, this is a twill fabric, but I'm still gonna kind of tug at it, not too much, because they can make this, and that, that's part of why drawing the lines are nice, because you can kind of see if you're kind of warping things by tugging at it, but just pull on it a little. This should be like the top of a drum head. Okay, when you tap on it, this should be taunt. And then however you tighten your hoop, for this one, I just <laughs> slip. Uh, for this one, I just tighten by screwing it. I'm like, come on, do it. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> this is one of those things where I'm just too real to, to take my channel and cut out context. Um, and now you can take this to the machine. It is hooped perfectly. Okay, to actually get that in there, that being the hoop, on this machine, you can see I have a really nice free arm. That's why I moved up, to be honest, is <laughs> not because of size, but because this makes it so much easier to do really weirdly shaped things, as opposed to a sewing and embroidery combo machine, which has a flat bed. You have to get really creative with those. Um, but typically, regardless of the machine, you're gonna very gently slide the hoop up and snap it into place. Um, and I can go over this machine specifically at some point if people are interested. Um, I love it. <laughs> it lets me get so much done as so fast. Um, and to be honest, like if you're gonna really get into embroidery, this is a great one to start with. Um, you know, if you, if you have big plans, big, big plans. So now that it's in here, let's go ahead and do a time lapse of an embroidery design. Now, as far as starting your embroidery, that is really gonna depend on your machine. Again, I'm sorry, this is like more of like an overview of like the basics of embroidery so that nobody feels scared to start and it kind of, you know, gives you some basic starter information um, to see if you wanna get into it or not. Now, I just hold the thread tail just a bit, see, like that. Um, some machines just kind of take off running. This one does, <laughs> so I hold this just so it gets a, it gets a nice, uh, grip on it and then we let it go. Okay, and it is done with that one color. And here's the thing is typically you would change out the thread color at this point. Most of these machines are gonna tell you, okay, it's time for the next color thread. So if I wanted to, um, I could swap out the color. Um, I'm not gonna waste time on that. I think we all know how to thread machines. So I'm just gonna let it go in the same color and you guys can watch and we're just gonna let it do its thing. And that's it. <laughs> Sorry, that's, it's just so sick. Okay, and now I know, I, I have this horrible habit of using black fabric when I do these videos. I know, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my phone's focus back out. Where are we? Oh, there we go. Okay, well, okay, well, I'm trying. I guess I get a gold star for trying, right? So here is the gold star. Is it gonna focus? It's not gonna focus. Why are you not focusing? Okay, there we go. Jeez almighty. Okay, so here's the gold star. It's uh, it's adorable. Now, if you can see the difference in, so you don't really need to change the thread color. That's what I was talking about earlier with regards to getting that glossy uh, polyester embroidery thread. You're, it's just the two sides of each point are angled differently. And so it, it hits the light it, or takes the light differently um, and looks really cool. Uh, this is one of the default designs that came with the PRS 100. So um, I didn't digitize this. Um, it just came with it. You'll find that a lot of machines will come with their own designs as well. So you don't really have to go and buy a bunch. 
Um, all right, let's go unhoop it. Okay, we're gonna take it out. So clips, whatever it is that you use as tension to keep the hoop. Um, for me, you know, it's the screw, so I'm gonna unscrew it. And I'm just gonna take it out there and making sure not to do it all the way because there's a there's a nut inside and I don't I don't want to lose it. I I, I did that once. <laughs> that didn't go very well. Um, and that basically is it. It just pops right out. Now, for a tearaway stabilizer, you'll just tear this off. No problem. Same thing with the water soluble. If this had been a knit fabric or a towel, I would have just torn this off. Um, the other thing for the water soluble stabilizers, you can get one of these little seam rippers with a little rubber doodad on it, and it picks it up very well um, from th things like, you know, the hole in the letter A. Uh, there's a joke in there, but I'm not gonna go with it. Um, so what I do is I just take some smaller scissors and literally just cut away. Uh, if it's something that's gonna be worn, I'll curve that corner so it's not poking or annoying anybody and curve and cut the excess and curve and cut the excess and that's done so uh one little tip because i'm not gonna skip over this um if it's something that's gonna be worn with a baby so this is really rough on baby skin i could have cut that a little better whatever you're gonna want to get like it, an iron-on knit interfacing and just put it over this and iron it down. They're very thin knit interfacings. Um, it'll, it'll make this very smooth. And I would honestly recommend it for any clothing items with the exception of like hats and beanies, right? Um, but definitely for babies, if you're making like onesies or something, try to, you know, take, take a little bit of that uh, interfacing and put it right over and just iron it down. It'll make it nice and soft for the baby skin. Um, well, that's it on unhooping and embroidery. And that's it. That's the basics of machine embroidery. I hope this video helped you. I do have lots, <laughs> lots and lots of plans um, for more machine embroidery videos because I've been doing a lot of this lately. Um, and I want to, I want to teach you guys all the things. Um, you can actually do a lot of really neat stuff. Uh, with bags and for those of you who didn't want to go out and get a 3d resin printer like me for little bag charms you can do it with embroidery as well um, so thank you very much please feel free to like the video subscribe to the channel um, and leave comments below let me know what you think i really appreciate all of the feedback and the love bye